For a few months, I've had a Columbia bike sitting unopened in my living room. You may have seen it in the background on a few videos. The bike is a Columbia Arch Bar, a men's single speed cruiser. I purchased the Arch Bar on sale from Sam's Club for $79.92. It has gone up in price since that point, but I've never seen it be more than $90. Being a cruiser bike in the sub $100 price range, the Arch Bar has a strong competitor in the big box cruiser bike space, and that's the Huffy Cranbrook. You can usually pick a Cranbrook up for under $90. I bought mine for $79 as well. The Huffy Cranbrook is very basic, but it's also very functional as a single speed cruiser. It has ugly welds and it's not flashy, but for what it is, it's basically the department store bike version of a tank. With that in mind, the Columbia Arch Bar has a proverbial steep hill to climb if it wants to compete with the Huffy Cranbrook. Before we get to the bike itself, it's important to understand Columbia bicycles, because apparently Columbia was the first American bicycle. It says so right on the head tube badge, which, by the way, is good looking, but is ever so slightly off center. I went to the Columbia Bicycles website and found a nice story about the Columbia Bike Company and its history, complete with a video about how historical the Columbia brand is when it comes to bicycles. I gotta admit, it hits a nostalgia nerve and the manufacturing plant looks like something out of a bygone era. There's even a shot of an employee riding by on what looks like a multi-speed version of the Columbia Arch Bar. It's kinda cool to see a vintage bike brand being made in the same factory. Only they're not really made in that factory. They're actually made in China now and imported over. So this is a Columbia only in name. But what about all those cool shots of someone making something in the factory? Well, they still do make things there. But I believe it's desks. But in the picture, it looks kind of like a walker. But I'm not really concerned with where it's made so much as I am what you're going to get in a modern Columbia Arch Bar for $79. Pleasantly, I think it may be the best sub $100 big box bike that I've purchased thus far in terms of quality. It's impressive enough looking that when I rode it by the local bike shop, a customer mistook it for an Electra Townie. That's a $500 bike. When I told them what I paid for it, they were astonished because it definitely looks like a more expensive bike. While the Arch Bar has an old school vibe, it does have a few modernish components. Like the bars, they're a riser rather than a sweeping style bar that you normally see on cruiser bikes. Wrap your hand around some Columbia branded grips that look really good. There are a few chrome components on the arch bar including the quill stem which is exceptionally long allowing for quite a bit of height adjustment. I purchased the arch bar thinking it was a coaster brake cruiser. It turns out it has linear pull brakes on both the front and the rear. Working down the steel fork, the arch bar has chrome hubs and 700c wheels. The aluminum wheels are fitted with 700 by 38 c tires. The arch bar's frame looks like a bridge support, and it's steel. The bike weighs in at 36.8 pounds. The crank assembly features lots of chrome and heart-shaped cutouts, and the pedals look like something you would see on a bike in about the $250 price range. Usually, I see chain guards made out of the same thin metal they use for the fenders on these cruiser bikes not on the arch bar. In this case, it's quite a bit thicker, so it should hold up well over time. Along with that rear chrome single speed hub, the arch bar has a rear rack that is removable. Per Columbia's support, they said this rack could hold up to 30 pounds. Capping off the vintage look of the bike is a faux leather Columbia branded saddle and front and rear fenders with white trim graphics. No bike is perfect and the arch bar is no exception to that rule. And those graphics I just mentioned are one of the shortcomings. They're slightly off-center everywhere on the bike, like the graphics on the top too. They aren't painted on or clear-coated. They're cheap off-center decals. Not just decals, but decals that in many cases are already peeling off the bike. There's also some chipping paint around the seat clamp area. These are minor cosmetic concerns, but they do detract from what otherwise is a beautiful bike. Now to the important question, and that's how does it ride? Now I mentioned this is a single speed cruiser, and living in a city that's loaded with hills, there are limited areas where I can enjoy a single speed bike. I'm tired of pushing single speed bikes up hills, so I cheated a little bit with the arch bar, and I hauled it down to our river bottom campgrounds so I could enjoy a few miles of flat ground. This is the perfect setting for a cruiser bike. Flat ground, beautiful blue skies, and some vintage coasters music playing in my earbuds all added up to a blast. The arch bar is a smooth ride. And that smooth ride is complemented by the high-rise bars. Most cruiser bikes I mentioned earlier have sweeping style handlebars that I'm not particularly fond of. 
so these high rise put you in a perfect relaxed position for some easy riding. Being a single speed cruiser and on flat ground, the bike moves at a leisurely pace, but you can pick things up a bit, but just a bit. At one point, I tried standing on the pedals, but I couldn't generate any more speed, and that's okay because slow and steady wins the race on a cruiser. Another thing that adds to the arch bar fun, at least for me, is that I can back pedal on this bike thanks to the omission of the coaster brake. While it's not quite as vintage of an experience, if you're in a town that loves stop signs and red lights, you'll find that it's a welcome addition not having to lift the bike to move the pedal back to a power stroke position for starting off. So all in all, the arch bar is a decent bike, especially for what I paid. And if you like nostalgia, riding a bike with the branding of America's first bicycle company may add to the fun. The arch bar is a vintage design from the 1920s, and I think Columbia did a good job recreating it on a budget. Columbia also has a bike based on the 1952 Liberator design, and I'd love to see that in a multi-speed drivetrain format. Until then, I have the arch bar. So what do you think about these new versions of old classics? Be sure to comment below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.